What's happening Hardscapers? Today we're going to talk about dense graded base or what I like to call it a traditional base and where you might use it with pavers and walls. Let's get into this. Now a dense graded base or traditional base is something that is actually recommended by ICPI, that's the Interlocking Concrete Pavement Institute, and this is what is spec'd on interlocking concrete pavement. And now over the years this has developed and contractors use different base materials in their base installations, and we've covered those. Open graded base and synthetic base are the two most popular there. And I like to use synthetic base where applicable as well as open graded base in other situations though there are a few situations where we will use a traditional base. And a traditional base is made up of a three quarter inch down to fines. This could be called granular A, A gravel, three quarter inch minus. There's a bunch of different names for it depending on your region. But what it essentially is is a three quarter inch angular crushed stone that goes all the way down to fines so you'll get a lot of sand in this mixture as well. And that's what makes up the majority of the base material. And then you get to the bedding layer and what is spec by ICPI is a concrete sand and this is a sub angular sand that acts as a leveling layer or a bedding layer for your pavers to sit on. Now personally whenever I'm going to do a traditional base I'm going to not opt for a concrete sand but I'm going to opt for an HPB or high performance bedding. This is a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch angular crushed stone. It's clean so there's no fines in it. It's just a lot easier to work with and it's so much much better to lay with so I really do prefer that however there are two situations where we will use concrete sand and we'll get into those as well but if you want to learn about the previous base materials that we've talked about that's being open graded base and synthetic base and where we use those links will be in the description below now traditional base we have three applications for number one is anytime we are along a foundation we do like to use a traditional base at least for a little bit I like to use dense graded base along a foundation where possible just because I don't want water to be sitting along that foundation I want it to move away from it and with an open graded base whenever you're along a foundation there and that water is moving straight through that open graded base it'll sit along that foundation until it hits that subsoil and hopefully our subsoil is moving away from our foundation so that's where we get the water away from it but dense graded base just along a foundation does a better job of that that being said if that side walkway or backyard patio that that's along that foundation is more suitable for a, a synthetic base using paver base panels where we can actually lay on the existing grade. We'll opt for that besides opting for a dense graded base in that situation. But as you can see in this example, we're actually building almost a raised side walkway. And in that situation, we're gonna use dense graded base because that's not on the existing grade. So we're not gonna use synthetic base and we don't want water sitting along that foundation. So we're not gonna use open graded base. Now our next application would be a front walkway and that's just because for most of our front walkway installations we're actually installing them along an existing driveway and typically those driveways are built in our area using a dense graded base I've yet to come across an open graded base driveway that is already existing so we're talking about an asphalt driveway or some sort of existing paver driveway so in that case I want to tie into that existing base from the driveway and continue that through my front walkway. So we're gonna opt for that dense graded base in that situation. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense to put in a, an open graded base in that situation and have a possibility of those fines from the driveway mixing in with our open graded base there if that's possible. Even though we could line that with a geotextile, I just find it much easier to just tie that in with a dense graded base and we're still very confident with our dense graded base installs. That being said, if that front walkway is raised at any point in that situation we'll use an open graded base and treat it much like a raised patio and then the final application for dense graded base would be a driveway when the pavers have a minimal jointing space between them and the reason why we do this is to get proper interlock with that system we talked about this in the open graded base video but if your pavers have a wider joint we can go ahead and build an open graded base system because that wider joint allows for that HP 
HPB or 3 8 inch quarter inch chip to move up into that joint where the jointy compound will meet it from the top down when we compact those pavers. Now if our pavers have a minimal joint and we're not going to get that quarter inch 3 8 inch chip moving up into it, what we need to do with our bedding layer is actually use concrete sand because it's finer and it will move into those joints from the bottom up. And that's actually what gives the interlock in our interlocking concrete pavement system, especially when we're installing that jointed compound from the top down to meet that bedding layer. It is especially important in those driveway applications which have much greater forces working against it than a pedestrian application, so that's why we will opt for that dense graded base. And since concrete sand won't sit on an open graded base like three quarter inch clear, which has no fines in it, we have to opt for that A gravel granular A three quarter inch minus base material. So that's why in certain driveway applications, we are gonna opt for that traditional base. And in this case, opt for that concrete sand bedding layer as opposed to an HPB quarter inch chip, three eighths inch chip. The only other application where we'll use concrete sand is in a concrete overlay, where we're just trying to make up a little bit to be able to raise those pavers slightly to give us an extra layer of drainage. One thing that we will never use is stone dust, limestone screenings, whatever you might call it in your area. We have a full video based on this, but this does not allow water to drain through it. Water will sit for long periods of time right below your pavers. This causes enormous amounts of issues like efflorescence in the pavers. The polymeric sand jointed compound won't be able to cure properly. And all of this just causes a lot of issues, not to mention using stone dust will avoid your manufacturer's warranty on your pavers and jointing compound, so don't use stone dust. And then getting into walls, there's one application where we'll use dense graded base for walls, and that is if we do not have a much lower area to drain the water out to that lands in behind the wall in that drainage area. This is because in an open graded base with walls, your drainage pipe in that drainage area is sits lower than it would than if you would use a dense graded base for that retaining wall. In an open graded base for a retaining wall, that open graded base is through that drainage area as well as that base, which means that drainage pipe will sit lower to collect that water and then to exit it out of the system. And in that sense, since the drainage pipe is much lower, we need a much lower area to drain that water out to for that pipe to daylight to. However, if we use a dense graded base for that retaining wall, our pipe can sit on top of that dense graded base in the open graded drainage area, which raises that pipe so that if we don't have a much lower area to drain that water to, using that dense graded base then allows us to exit that water where it is necessary. So that's our solution when it comes to retaining walls using dense graded base. Then when it comes to dense graded base, since we're on the topic, edge restraint, you can use multiple different types of edge restraint for this. We typically do still opt for a concrete edge restraint in these situations. However, a plastic edge restraint with the 10 inch nails that will corrode and latch onto the fines in the base material is a good application. Still, we do prefer to use a concrete edge restraint in most scenarios. Then when it comes to jointing compound, we're always going to opt for a polymeric sand and these situations. This is a dry application, sweep it around, consolidate by compacting and wet it once it gets to an eighth of an inch below the top of the paver or the bottom of the chamfer. And once again, we've got several videos on the installation of polymeric sand. And if you want further information on the installation of interlocking concrete pavement, segmental retaining walls, there's a link in the description below for the members only platform. Included in this members only platform is our How to Hardscape headquarters software, which will help you stream processes in your business, including budgeting, estimating, and so much more. And if you like to use dense graded base, traditional base, whatever you might call it in your installations, and you have certain applications for that, leave it in the comment section below. Let me know where you like to use it. Or if you don't like to use it and you like to use other bases, leave it all in the comment section below. Like this video if you found it helpful for whatever reason, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more hard to content like this. Thank you so much for watching.